stay alive and active, we all need to breathe oxygen from the air. But 78% of the air, more than three quarters, is actually made up of nitrogen. Only 21% is oxygen. A healthy person can get all the oxygen they need. But for sick babies struggling to breathe, the small percentage of oxygen in the air may not be enough. This is where an oxygen concentrator can help. These machines make oxygen from the ambient air. If they are looked after properly, they can keep producing oxygen day after day and they really do save lives. In this video, we will give you a basic introduction to the oxygen concentrator and explain the different parts of the machine. So the function of this one is to concentrate oxygen from the ambient air. So what it does is it takes in air, the ambient air. From there, it uh, removes, it filters out the nitrogen from the mixture. And what comes out in the plant is uh, oxygen. Inside the concentrator, there are two large sieves. These are able to remove almost all of the nitrogen from the air, leaving more than 90% oxygen. The oxygen comes out of two outlets on this concentrator. You can regulate the flow of oxygen coming out with the flow meters. Each of the flow meters goes up to 8 litres per minute. But it is really important to notice that 8 litres per minute is the maximum total output that this concentrator can produce. This means that you cannot have both flow meters fully open at the same time. The machine will not cope. The total output of both ports must not exceed 8 litres per minute. So, if one outlet is on 3 litres per minute, then the second one cannot go above 5. Or, if the first is on 4 litres, the other can also not go above 4. The two flow meters should add up to 8 or less. Now, let's see the other controls. The power switch to turn on the machine is above the right-hand flow meter. On the other side is the reset button. If there is an electrical problem, like a short circuit or a mains power surge, the button will pop out. To restart the machine, turn off the power switch, push the reset button back in, and then turn the machine back on again. The small display between them is the hour meter. This has two lines of numbers. The top line records the total hours the machine has been used. This is a new machine, so it has only been used for one hour so far. The line below shows the running time since the machine was last turned on. So in this session, it's been used for 33 minutes. The number will go back to zero when you turn the machine off. Below that, there are three indicator lights. The one on the right is the power indicator, which shows the machine is on. It will turn red if the power has been disconnected or in the event of a power cut. If you hear this alarm, it needs immediate investigation. It means there are babies with prongs inserted who are not getting oxygen. On the left is the low oxygen alarm, which goes off if the machine is not producing enough oxygen. There are a number of reasons why oxygen concentration can drop below target levels, which we will explain in later videos in this series. If that happens, it is important to check what is wrong. Otherwise, the babies on the machine will not be getting enough oxygen. The most common is that the two ports have been opened up too much. For instance, if one of them is on 6 litres per minute and the other is also opened up to 6, you are trying to get 12 litres per minute out of a machine only designed to produce a total of 8. The concentration of oxygen drops below 85% and then the alarm goes off. To stop the alarm, 
you need to reduce one of the flow meters until the total flow is 8 or below. The final alarm in the middle is a general malfunction alarm, which alerts you to other problems in the machine. If this lights up, you need to call the maintenance department to investigate what is wrong. The machine has a system to monitor itself and look for problems. If the general malfunction alarm goes off, it means it has found something wrong internally, which needs proper maintenance. So to locate the part of uh, the filters. The other main thing you need to know about a concentrator are filters. These need to be cleaned weekly. The first of these protects the main air inlet on the back of the machine. Now this is the closed particle filter. So the ambient air goes through here. So here, this is the only entry point of ambient air. So this will filter out uh, uh, large particles that are in the air. The second filter is called the fine particle filter. It's inside the machine. So the field element is inside the housing, so you have to open. It can filter out tiny particles, all the way down to the size of a bacteria. To change it, you have to open the housing. It then just lifts out. It has to be cleaned by the maintenance department and should never be put in water. We will show you how to change and clean the gross particle filter in a later video. It is really important that you do this regularly. Otherwise, the machine can clog up with dust, which will end up in the lungs of a baby. Finally, here once again are the parts of the concentrator. You can use either of the outlet ports to connect directly to a flow splitter or a CPAP device, or directly to a patient. Unlike some other models, the ports do not have an internal valve, and so oxygen will start to flow as soon as you open the flow meter. Ideally, when delivering oxygen to babies, you will be using a flow splitter because it is much easier to accurately calibrate the very small doses needed. The flow meters on this model go from zero to one liter per minute rather than on the concentrator where it goes from zero to eight liters per minute.